Before the year 1960, the Aral Sea was the world's fourth largest lake, and used to lie across the border between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. It was particularly rich in fish. It supplied one-sixth of all the fish consumed in the Soviet Union and huge fish export business were there. It doesn't anymore. It's gone, reduced to a tenth of its size. Now, this is a wasteland of toxic sand, and one of the most spectacular examples of humankind's destruction of nature. The destruction of Aral Sea started in 1960s. During that time, cotton was necessary, not only for clothing but also for weapon production. Leaders determined that the USSR was too dependent on cotton imports, so they selected Uzbekistan and Central Asia to hopefully lead the world in cotton production. Land used for food production was forcibly converted for the cotton crop. The native people were forced to dig irrigation canals for the more thirsty cotton plants. The Soviet government started to construct irrigation canals that were fed by water of the main rivers that flowed into the Aral Sea. At first this proved manageable, but around 1965, the Soviets launched a major push to further develop the cotton industry, requiring a major expansion in the network of canals. Meanwhile Uzbek cotton became famous and by 1988 Uzbekistan had become the world's largest exporter of cotton. However, due to decrease in water flow from rivers and evaporation of water from the sea, the Aral Sea shrinked. Not only did the Aral Sea become smaller, evaporation also triggered salinity, causing the death of almost all fish. In order to contain the salinity, the extraction of groundwater was increased. That also became a disaster. Human consumption was affected. Large sectors of the population ended up having no access to drinking water and the water that remained was highly polluted by fertilizers and pesticides used in cotton farming. As a result, many people left their home villages and got settled on other places away from the sea. The Aralska harbor lost its water in 1970 and its inhabitants saw the sea move away day by day. The ships were stuck in a desert of salty sand. At the beginning of the 1980s, when engineers realized that the amount of water reaching the lake was only 10% of the water flow in 1960, it was too late. Most of the surface had dried out and the rest was experiencing an accelerated disappearance process. This shrinkage split the sea into a number of separate bodies of water, the two largest of which are the South Aral Sea and the North Aral Sea. After the collapse of USSR, the countries such as Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, with the addition of Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan established a joint committee to coordinate efforts to save the Aral Sea. Environmentalists and native people tried their best to bring water to the sea. During the past three decades, restoration of the Aral Sea ecosystem has focused mainly on planting trees on drained seabed to reduce the sandstorms that cause health problems to the people and that also helps to hold the fragile soil together. In 2005, Kazakhstan took drastic measures. With the help of World Bank, they built an eight-mile-long dam to separate the northern pocket of the sea into an independent lake with extensive improvements along the Sir Darya River to improve its flow. The works were completed in 2005 itself, and the results have been impressive, with recovery much faster than expected. By 2008 the North Aral Sea had grown in area by 20%, its level had risen by 12 meters, its volume had increased by 68%, its salinity had dropped to the levels which was on 1960s and many native plants, migratory birds and animals had returned. With the return of the fish came the return of people and communities. People who had left the region came back, and the fishing industry has been restored to the northern areas of the sea. It's a success story, and an example of ecological restoration on a large scale. Thanks for watching this video. Please share this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel.